Alright. Okay. Okay. Initially forged in the intimacy of love, the relationship between life partners changes when one becomes the caregiver for the other, and the stress of balancing their day-to-day -day lives takes its toll. You're all set. Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. Today we're in Burnaby, British Columbia, visiting with Tom, who cares for his wife, Sarah. Sarah has multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease that affects the brain and spinal cord. Got it? Yep. Because of her condition, Sarah has gone from full mobility to relying on a power chair. Tom works hard to care for Sarah, but he's finding it to be challenging. We're going to learn about these challenges and seek out advice from beyond traditional healthcare fields to find practical solutions to help improve the lives of these caregivers and the people they care for. Welcome to House Call. Thank you very much for sitting down with me today, Tom. You're welcome. So how long has Sarah had MS? Sarah, she was diagnosed in 93, and in about 2004, she sort of went worse to a secondary progressive stage that basically forced her to have to use a, wheel, a power wheelchair to get around. Can you describe a typical day for me? It's usually a scramble. The alarm's actually set for five, but I'm never usually out of bed until about six, it seems like. I have to get Sarah out of bed to her manual chair because it's easier to maneuver in the bath. Then I'm scrambling out the door by nine. Then I come home and cook some dinner. And we watch some TV and get ready for bed. That's tough. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's a lot of work. Right. It's, it's too much mental activity all the time. So. Right. At the back of my mind, I'm wondering what's the next thing I have to do. Yeah. Zzzz. Yeah, it so sounds like that it. buzz, right? Yeah. <laughs> How has um, Sarah's condition affected your relationship? It's been, you know, challenging it's a, it's a different relationship for sure in some ways it's, it's made it more much more intimate looking after each other dedicated to one another but there's been some sacrifices yes we did like to travel yeah just it just seems like you're you're happy when you're away from your normal day to day yeah Tom works hard to care for Sarah, but he needs to remember to take time for himself, too. In addition, Tom and Sarah need to remember to care for their relationship and to spend time together as husband and wife, not just as caregiver and care recipient. So I'm going to send Tom to flotation therapy, which is a unique type of relaxation therapy that has been shown to improve mood, reduce stress, and even help with chronic pain. In the meantime, Sarah will be getting a makeover, and later today, I have a surprise in store for them. Hey, come on in. This is a flotation tank. Okay. So uh, it's also known as a sensory deprivation tank or an isolation tank. We got about 10 inches of water in there and we put a thousand pounds of Epsom salts in every tank and it's what allows you to, to float. Once the door is closed, it is light proof. So you have an environment that has maximally reduced external sensory input from coming into your central nervous system completely suppressing the stress response and stress hormones and your joints will decompress, all your muscles relax. Do you have any questions at all? No, nope, that's great. Okay. The high salt content in the float tank's water gives it antibacterial and antifungal properties. But some organisms can still survive, so that's why it's important to go to a facility that is licensed and clean. Don't float if you're sick or if you have any open sores and try not to drink the water or get it in your eyes. Research has shown that flotation rest therapy is as effective as other more popular relaxation techniques like biofeedback, meditation, and relaxation exercises. The more you practice relaxation, the better you'll get at it. And everyone is different, so the most important thing to remember is to pick a relaxation therapy that works for you and to do it regularly. Oh, hi, hi. Beth. <laughs> How do you feel? Awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. You look so relaxed. It's oh, like your whole you. face is relaxed. <laughs> it's a cosmic experience. Started off, it was feel sort of the dimensions of the tank and that sort of thing. And, and I got to the point where I was floating and just sort of like, I found that this sort of like, this I surrender pose. It seemed like it was the best for me. And it was um, helped my neck and my back just to li line out perfectly. Got to the point where I just forgot about my body. Just, just forgot about it. Yeah. There's no, all, there's no aches, no pains, nothing was there. During that time, I was not aware of it all. You're not supposed to see anything, but I'd close my eyes, open them again, and then I saw 
stars that I was enough floating in, in, in space. At one point, I saw myself smiling at myself. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, it really brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. It was just incredible. I'd never experienced anything like it before. Yeah, it really it sort of underlined that with that mind-body connection is, yes. right? if, you could, if you could just sort of defocus your mind, it's, it helps your body. And when you go home, I think you'll find that you'll be a better caregiver by taking this time for yourself. And I, I really do need to focus on that more, so thank you for this opportunity. And I'll definitely do it again. Great. Now that Tom's relaxed and Sarah's had her makeover, it's time for Tom to step out of his role as caregiver and back into his role as husband and life partner. It's getting harder for them to travel around the world, but they can still be tourists close to home, so we've hired a vehicle designed specifically for accessibility from Vancouver's KJ Limousine Services, and we'll be sending them to the Sea to Sky Gondola, which is a beautiful, fully accessible destination in Squamish, British Columbia. We're gone, gone, gone to line. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. That is so beautiful. Wow. It's really breathtaking. It's very cool. This is incredible. There you go. There you wow. Go. Yeah. It was great to be able to come up to a place like this. Never even knew it was here. It's going to be slow. Here we go. Seeing Sarah doing something that she was uncomfortable with, but did it, it just reinforced my admiration for her, her ability to show strength in adversity and being able to test her limits. The whole day has been a brilliant experience to know that I can get out of the confines of our apartment and do something like this together. Makes it, makes it really worthwhile. Cheers. Cheers. Mm, that's good. It's wonderful. I think it's been a, a, a really day to remember. <laughs> Caregiving is life-changing. It can be incredibly rewarding. It can also be exhausting and frustrating. I hope that today we have given Tom and Sarah a break from their roles as caregiver and care recipient and help them to reconnect as husband and wife. I also hope that Tom can continue to find time to float away and take care of himself. It's important for every caregiver to schedule time for self-care regularly. It's also important for both caregivers and care recipients to make time to nourish a healthy and loving relationship with each other. Thank you for joining us today. Please share this episode to help raise awareness about caregiving and follow us on social media for more information and additional resources on accessible travel. See you next time.